Hello and welcome dear students, professionals and viewers to the informative topic on drug substance and vendor selection for product development. In this video, I will walk you through for the critical aspects for drug substance selection and the vendor selection for product development. See whether you develop a novel product or whether you develop a generic product. Drug substance selection and vendor selection and finalization is the most critical thing. And why this is critical? Because it, it involves a lot of lots of time and the cost and the product behavior and the timelines for launching and manufacturing depends on the drug substance selection and the vendor identification and selection. So let's start with the video. First of all, we will see what are the factors. Those are required to be considered for source finalization. For example, you have given a product for development and now you have to purchase the materials including the API or drug substance then raw materials and the change parts for machine. So first of all, consider a generic product. You will do the literature search and from that literature search, you will identify the API and its property like chemical structure, polymorphic form if any and the patents if any. Then you will see whether you can get it from the domestic market or the market for from your country or overseas from foreign countries. So there are many suppliers for the materials and based on your requirement, you have to identify and call for the information from the suppliers that whether they have this material or not. And then the activity begins. So then you will see if it is a overseas supplier, then you have to do some licensing activity like import license for API. If it is a domestic supplier, then you have to do other activities like you have to inform the local authorities for the use of that material and you have to have some facilities so that you can use that material, you can store that material. And if the material is novel or new, for example, if the material is new in India, then you will have to go through some licensing requirements. Then you will check the grade of the API, whether you require the DMF grade or you require the grade from grade matching or compliance to the Indian pharmacopoeia or the country specific pharmacopoeia. Then you will see the cost of API. See the cost of API is the key consideration requirement or it is a very important requirement because API is the main constituent or main raw material which cost more than the other raw materials. Then the lead time of the API after purchase order. So you have to understand what is the lead time or what is the time required for the supplier to provide you the material. Then confirmation of the supply once finalized. See it is not like that some supplier is saying that he that supplier will provide the material but when you order the material that time that supplier says that they don't have the material. So you have to confirm whether the supplier can supply the material or not. Then in-house or outsource API. Some of the times the company which is going to make the finished formulation, they have their own manufacturing facility for the API. And in that case, the API is cost effective. And the generic product will also have a competitive edge in the market. Because for the generics, cost is a very important factor to survive in the market. That's why API cost become very crucial. 
then api quantity consumption on annual basis so you have to give the confirmation to the supplier that what will be the annual consumption or required and that requirement will be tentative on the basis of the market volume requirement for the product then development regulatory filing and launching timelines for the product so once you have the product in your hand and to be developed that time you have to consider the timelines for development timelines for regulatory filing and the timelines for launching and also you have to consider the annual consumption of the api when it is products produced on commercial scale see here important thing is that supplier selection or api selection is a very time consuming and critical process so it is to be done with great care and understanding along with the risk assessment at every step api factors to be considered for source finalization are risk assessment of the api supplier and maintaining the strategic association or relationship with the api supplier because both the both the parties are doing business and they have their own requirements and the own timelines so the supplier and the purchase they should have a good association and api source selection and the api selection is a team work it is not the work of a single person or it cannot be handled by one person why because different teams have different aspects like analytical formulation development legal commercial and supply chain then regulatory affairs patent and ip ip means intellectual property department then quality assurance purchase budgeting and costing department so all these departments work together and they check the api source and the api from their perspective that's why the api source selection becomes very very critical and time consuming but with the good teamwork it can be achieved there are some guidelines for uh, api source selection or you can say it as supplier qualification supplier qualification and management guidelines and principles can be utilized and can be seen for api source selection usp chapter is there for supplier qualification and the chapter is 1083 number chapter so these principles can be seen and utilized then whenever you are going for selection of the api and its source then some aspects are there like administrative aspect the manufacturing facility and the practices of the api supplier and manufacturer are required to be tested seen and understood then whether the cgmp compliance is there or not what type of regulatory approvals the supplier is having what is the dmf status whether it is in application stage or it is active or it is inactive whether there is any alert or manufacturing alert given by the regulatory authority to that api supplier or manufacturing facility is required to be checked documents and certificates available with the supplier like dmf cp edqm these type of certificates are available or not and whether these type of requirements are being fulfilled by the api supplier or not then coming to the material manufacturing once you finalize with the administrative requirements then manufacturing methods and processes are required to be understood thoroughly because these manufacturing methods and processes will be the prime focus for the regulatory agencies manufacturing capacity route of synthesis this is also called as ros this route of synthesis is very very important from the impurity perspective from the quality perspective from the specification perspective and also for the patent infringement perspective then the key starting materials are required to be understood 
these are called as ksm and the intermediates and from where the api manufacturer is purchasing or manufacturing these ksm and intermediates because many of the times if the ksm changes then the material behavior changes according also intermediates and the ksms have their own specifications and quality and if the ksm and intermediates quality get change then it will certainly have impact on the api quality then process specification and the control for impurities what are the specifications are given by the api manufacturer and how the impurities are being controlled at the manufacturer site what is the control strategy provided by the api manufacturer for controlling the impurities residual solvents and the polymers then compliance to the regulatory requirements how the api manufacturing facility and the manufacturer complies to the regulatory requirements then coming to the analytic and quality related factors in this generally the batch sewage and the trained data is taken from the supplier and it is evaluated then the specifications are studied and the specifications are compared with the legal requirements or with the ich requirements you can say it might be it might not be legal it will be regulatory requirements or the specifications are meeting to the current guidelines or regulatory requirements or not whether the specifications are stringent or the specifications are meeting to the compendial requirements or monograph requirements or the ich requirements then analytical methods availability is there a method available with the api supply whether it is validated or not how the method is validated availability and supply of the reference standard and the impurities whether the api supplier is going to give you the reference standards for starting your work and the impurities what are the impurities provided by the api supplier and what are the impurities required to be purchased from the other sources then pharmacopoeial or in house test method and the specification compliance then the main important thing is stability and storage data and the recommendations provided by the api supplier then force degradation data and the impurity data so the analytical or quality control related factors are mainly the factors which are related to the testing and the control then there are some formulation related aspects and the critical quality attributes related aspects you can say or you can consider it as the coa certificate of analysis and that certificate of analysis will have all these parameters listed there it start from identification identification should be by physical and chemical method like ir and hplc then what is the assay water content or loss on dry what is the particle size bulk density and tap density what is the solubility and hygroscopicity whether the material is with hygroscopic nature or is it non hygroscopic then polymorphism and isomerism whether the molecule shows the polymorphism and isomerism what are the different polymorphs produced by the manufacturer and whether there is specific polymorph or whether there is a polymorphic mixture then salt form or pseudo polymorphism sometimes the api is produced in the form of solvates and hydrates so these form are known as pseudo polymorphs then related substances and impurities including the enantiomer purity it is also known as chiral purity xenotoxic impurity and nitrosamine declaration 
nowadays nitrosamine declaration is very very important and the supplier have to provide or has to provide the nitrosamine declaration and also the supplier should give the declaration and risk assessment for reducing the nitrosamines because nitrosamines are xenotoxic impurities they are carcinogenic in nature and these are required to be controlled in the api itself then potency salt content bound water content solubility data stability data and the trend data for cms first of all the cmas are required to be understood for the material whether it is particle size or whether it is a polymorph or it is a solubility based on that the cms can be controlled then formulation development related see after all the reason for purchase of the api is to formulate that api into a formulation and that's why formulation will be seen very critical the formulation development people should understand the api behavior and how that api is going to impact on to the formulation so that is very very important and the factors which are required to understand and to develop a good formulation are like the particle size solid state form or polymorphs melting point and many more these we are going to study in detail now so appearance appearance may have impact on the product appearance if your api is colored then you have to see the color of the tablets also and the manufacturing equipments after use will have some color if your api is colored sometimes the use of colored material in the manufacturing area is very difficult and that that's why the color will be taken up by the equipments or will be remaining on to the surfaces and that's why it will affect the cleaning so appearance is important particle morphology and particle size distribution if you are working on a product with a direct compression then particle morphology will have impact because it will affect the flow then particle size distribution particle size distribution impacts the processing it also impacts the physical attributes and it also impacts the dissolution and bioavailability then solid state form polymorph different polymorphs have different solubilities and different bioavailabilities also different polymorphs shows different stability that's why from formulation aspect polymorphism is required to be understood in detail then melting point if the melting point is low like 50 degree or 70 degree that time from for that melting point of api great care should be taken for processing like drying should be done at lower temperature and the processing should be done very critically aqueous solubility as a function of ph bcs solubility and saturation solubility these are the key requirements and these have a great impact on the formulation behavior hygroscopicity moisture content and residual solvents then process and degradant impurities what are the process impurities and degradant impurities are required to be understood what is the density whether it is bulk density tap density and true density because these things affect on the flowability then the pk and chemical stability so chemical stability in solid state and in the solution these are the very important requirements to be understood and to be studied for finalizing the api then generally two lots are required to be evaluated from at least two different suppliers so take two different supply two different lots and make the batches and load it on stability in the different batches so that 
with the help of stability data also you will be able to understand the stability of the formulation made from two different api lots and from two different sources and based on that you can select the best api source then factors to be considered for finalizing the api so whether you are working on tablet whether you are working on capsule or granules or pellets or sachets so based on that formulation design design you have to decide the key requirements for the api like particle size or polymer or the density requirements so formulation type whether it is ir immediate release extended release tablet formulation or capsule formulation or pellet so that is required to be understood and based on that api can be studied then bcs class and dose what is the dose of api whether it is having high dose like 1000 mg or whether it is having low dose like 2 mg or 3 mg or 1 mg then bcs class what is the bcs class of molecule if it is highly soluble then you can select the particle size of around 50 micron if it is class 2 then particle size may play a critical role and you can start with around 30 micron see these are the examples i am giving you hypothetically it depends on product to product behavior and the requirements if the dose of the api is high like 1000 mg and if the api is highly soluble then you have to have the understanding of the processing whether the micronized material will be easy to process or whether the coarser material will be easy to process then these cms of the api are required to be related to the cqas of the formulation if you are working on bcs class 4 then you can get the different lots of api which are having different phds and then you can study the effect of phd on to the formulation dissolution and based on that you can finalize the particle size then api load in the formulation and the manufacturing so if the content of api is low medium or high in the formulation and what is the manufacturing procedure based on that you can ask for the particle size and the density then you have to consider the patent claims and the infringement analysis if you are working on a formulation with non infringing technique so that time you have to see the patents and their claims related to the api for example if crystalline api is patented then you cannot go for crystalline api that time you have to select the api form like amorphous which is not patented so these are some of the key requirements and information regarding the api source selection and the api selection then life cycle of the vendor qualification or vendor selection or source selection so in the life cycle of this selection and qualification there are some steps like risk assessment then search and shortlist the potential suppliers identify the material criticality evaluation of the material and finalization of the supplier then continuously monitor the performance of the supplier whether the supplier is confirming to the pre required specifications or not then conditions for approval or disapproval when you are going to approve or keep the vendor in approved state or whether and when you are going to disapprove the vendor then confidentiality and other agreements these agreements are very important these are done for the for maintaining the confidentiality and for the continuous supply and also for the costings then supplier qualification disqualification condition can be derived and alternate vendors can be taken into consideration generally the companies which have the high volume requirement for the formulations 
they work on the alternate vendors as well from their from the starting point of development so that whenever there is problem in the supply with supplier number 1 they can switch to supplier number 2 that is known as alternate vendors so this is regarding the api selection and supplier selection for the formulations and product development i hope the video is not much lengthy and the video has covered different aspects thank you for watching the video keep learning and keep watching pharma learning in depth channel for the informative videos thank you